The webinar will be recorded today, so we can post it uh, on the BCFN events page and the Finesse events page. And just take care of yourself. Climate change is a pretty heavy topic sometimes, and it's great that GUYU will share some tools that we can use um, to mitigate and hopefully adapt to climate change in, in better ways. Um, so I just want to also acknowledge the team. There's been a lot of hard work going into this webinar series. So we have Guyu Lin, our presenter, but also an organizer from Finesse. Uh, we have myself, Joanna Prince, which uh, thanks so much, Joanna, for all your work on the tech side of things. We have Patricia Rojas, my colleague, which you'll hear from next who's um, been integral in the planning of this workshop. And we have Annette and Dara from our team uh, that have put a lot of hard work in on the communication side. So I would like to pass it off to my colleague, Patricia Rojas for some uh, opening remarks or yeah, and, and a welcome from her. Thanks, Patricia. Thanks, Christian. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Cheryl, for starting out. Um, starting us off in, in with these powerful um, words and you know it's always good to to um, have that um, message uh, when we start those events and thank you you all for um, taking the time to uh, to attending to attend this workshop today uh, my name is Patricia Rojas I am the regional climate change coordinator for the BC Assembly of First Nations and I am joining this morning from the unceded traditional territory of Williams Lake First Nation. Um, yeah, there is no doubt that we are in a climate crisis. Uh, you know, the fire season starting early this year. We were also having some uh, flooding issues around the province. Um, Alberta was really bad with fires and now Halifax is like hell uh, and it's really terrifying. Uh, this crisis brings the urgency to get prepared for those climate impacts that are increasing in quantity, frequency, ferocity, and also uncertainty. And First Nations understand this urgency um, or the urgency to get prepared for that for those um, climate impacts um, uh, very well. Um, so in BCFN uh, received mandates uh, from Chiefs in Assembly to support First Nations community-based climate leadership through various resolutions. Uh, you can see some of those resolutions if you want to check on those are also on, on the website. So those resolutions basically mandate uh, BCFN to support First Nations to build resiliency or uh, uh, resilience and help reduce greenhouse gas emissions as well. So accessing and managing climate data and, and combining this data or this information with First Nations knowledge is crucial. It's essential uh, to understand the impacts uh, that are coming with climate change and also to inform decisions. So in this context, BCFN has partnered with the First Nations Emergency Service Society and together have designed a virtual series to create a space for First Nations in BC to learn, discuss, and utilize climate projections data tools uh, for climate action and, as I said, uh, decision-making as well. So on today's workshop, uh, which is one of two workshops that we are hosting, uh, FENES will support participants in understanding how to interpret, interpret climate data and the potential use of climate data in planning and decision-making. So the idea is that participants uh, will learn how to access uh, First Nations research specific climate data hosted on the FNS public information sharing website. That's the Lightship platform. And the goal is to um, understand how to search and access community data um, <clears throat> and um, to know how to use the, the data. So and a specific resource was shared with you. Um, and it's also um, posted on the on BCFN events website. And uh, Christy will also paste this resource on the chat if you don't uh, have access to that. 
Um, and also in the web, on the website, you can find uh, um, bios from the presenters and also the recording uh, from the first webinar. Um, that was a webinar hosted uh, almost a month ago, and it's a, it was about 1.5 global, uh, the global climate target. Um, so that's also on the, on the website. So now we can see the agenda for today. Christy, can you please go to the next slide? Yeah, so for today, we had our um, opening prayer. And the next, uh, we will have a presentation. Uh, that's an overview of climate data and its uses, um, and climate da data access and interpretation. And then we will have a very, very short break and then we will do an exercise. Um, and after the exercise, we will have the Q&A uh, questions as well. Um, and finally, we will have those closing remarks. So the idea is um, um, trying to provide all the information that is possible and also um, provide a space for you to make um, your questions. So whenever you want to ask a questions, uh, we know uh, we know we have that space at the end, but if you have any questions, uh, please uh, just put those on the chat or um, raise your hands. So thank you very much. And I will pass over to Christy or Guyu. Not sure, actually. <laughs> Thanks, Patricia. Thanks so much uh, for your introduction and remarks. And without further ado, I will pass it over to Guyu Lin to share his screen. Guyu is the data support specialist at Finesse in Finesse's decision support team. He integrates climate data for First Nations communities and develops tools to support communities in decision making. So thank you so much, Guyu, and really looking forward to your presentation. So I'll mute myself. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Thank you for participating in this workshop. I'm Guyu, the climate change analyst in, at the First Nation Emergency Service Society. Uh, Finesse is a nonprofit organization. We support DC First Nations to build safer and healthier communities. Um, I just want to acknowledge that I live and work from the unceded and traditional territory of Masquerim Nation. Yeah. Thank you for participating. In the next hour, I will um, briefly introduce climate data. Uh, also climate change scenarios and how the climate data can be useful to First Nation communities. Uh, we will have a look at the FNES climate data webpage, learn how to access, download, and interpret the data. We will also have time for hands-on experience. You can try to um, find data for your own community. Uh, first, climate data comes in historic and current data. Um, the historical data are recorded by um, stations. We can access climate record for um, detailed information. However, unfortunately, um, some communities don't have a station nearby. That's the uh, information for that community. Community may become less reliable. Um, in the past, past few decades, satellites are used to monitor weather and climate, and people can extract some information from the uh, satellite image archives. In next up, forecast and projections. Weather forecasts can be as short as for a week or longer for a year. We know it is likely to be an El Nino year this year, so it might be uh, even hotter this summer. And to uh, plan for longer time, longer period in the future, we look at uh, long-term projections for climate change. And this is the uh, focus for this workshop. To 
better understand the projections, we need to know um, what assumptions are they made? Are they based on uh, the most two common systems? Are they shared social economic pathways and representative concentration pathway? or SSP and RCPs, those are um, greenhouse gas emission scenarios. Uh, the RCP is, um, is a little old and outdated, and we are uh, look at more at the SSP scenarios now. Generally, the greater the number uh, indicates more greenhouse gas emissions. So when we talk about, um, for example, SSP 5, 8.5, um, we're looking at uh, increased um, fossil fuel development. And when we talk about the SSP 1, for example, 2.6, uh, those are more sustainable scenario. Um, we are looking at uh, uh, net zero, greenhouse gas emission around about 2075. So um, once we get our climate data, how can we use them for community planning? Uh, for example, we if we know how much more or how much less rain we are getting in the future. It can improve our uh, water resources management. Also, we can do better agricultural planning. The climate data also comes handy in the energy use planning. We might uh, use less energy for heating in the winters, but uh, uh, we might need more energy for cooling for the summers. <clears throat> the data is um, also useful for disaster preparedness and uh, adaptation. Um, Finesse has a lot more involvement in this part. Uh, for example, uh, the extreme heat, high temperature has an impact on human health. And to prepare for that, we might want to um, build cooling centers. Once we know how much it's gonna, uh, the temperature is gonna increase in the future, um, maybe uh, those cooling centers are not needed now, but um, in 50 years or 100 years, based on the data we are looking at. And with the support of the data, we are looking at um, real numbers. It might be easier for, for communities to apply for fundings and grants. And with the detailed information, we now know um, what the future, future condition look like for a community. We can speak up and uh, push for changes to mitigate climate change. We're saying, hey, uh, uh, if we keep uh, doing the, the SSP 5, 585 scenario, we, we are gonna get like five degrees of increase and that is not accept acceptable. So we push for changes in the policy and uh, the development we are taking. Next up, we go to, yeah, let's take a look at uh, Finesse public information sharing page. The, I think it is sh shared in the chat, but I'm uh, gonna do it again. Now we go to, we follow the link and go to our public info sharing page. We have um, two pages now. 
one for climate change and one for wildfire overview. Uh, uh, let's just focus on the climate change one today. We click on load and then view the interactive map. Now um, that's a map for PC and uh, those little dots are a reserves of fascinations. So we can uh, click and the pan through the map and scrolling to zoom in or zoom out. And yeah, you can find your uh, own reserves or uh, reserves you are interested in. So, and there's uh, another way to find the location you want. So you click on the on the globe and uh, magnifier icon, the geo search. So you can uh, type in the name of your community, like uh, Peters. Yeah, um, sometimes the search doesn't work very well. You can just maybe search for the um, closest town or city uh, next to your next to your community, say Kamloops. And then you can uh, find the reserves near the near Kamloops. And as you find your reserve of interest, click on the map and uh, tiny window pop up. Shows extreme cold and your rainfall and your temperature, extreme heat. Those are um, data for the next 100 years. So there are five periods, 20 years of each. And they, this shows how uh, extreme heat will change for Kamloops. And we can switch to extreme cold. Those are in Celsius degrees. Uh, same goes to temperature, the average temperature and rainfall. Yeah, those are uh, generalized um, periodic data for the one, um, one reserve. And there's also a download function so we can click on the the one with the floppy disk. And there's a download button here. You can um, click download. Oh. Uh, Yeah, um, there be might be some um, problems on the back end, but uh, yeah, let's see if this one works. Sorry. Um, anyway, um, we have one available here. Um, this, uh, that is the uh, report we can download if everything works uh, as they should be. So uh, I'm gonna take a look at it later. Uh, so uh, the report covers uh, mentioned average annual precipitation, precipitation as snow, in average, annual average temperature, 
extreme low temperature, extreme high temperature. Those are uh, information uh, available from the map. Also, it also, uh, it covers some um, seasonal variables like the seasonal precipitation, how much uh, rainfall we are getting each season, and uh, what are the temperatures like. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. it, it's showing future. Is that showing future predictions of what? It, projecting what it's going to be in the future or based on uh, what yeah uh, it's based on the it's based on the uh, projection under the high emission scenario so in this case for Kamloops um, we're getting uh, more rain annually and less snow and increased average temperature increased um extreme low temperature and uh yeah the high temperature might be uh, so these are predictions that we'll, yeah, those, we'll see if we don't do any um uh, interventions is that what these predictions are mm, yes those okay. are under the yeah the high emission scenario if we don't do anything Mm, let's see, do we have a... Sorry, the download function is, isn't working today. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's take a look at the low emission scenario. Mm. To you, I think Carlos has his hand yeah. up. Carlos, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. I'm just wondering about those those uh, predictions. I noticed they don't have any margin of error, no confidence intervals. Like yeah, uh, like they're they're pretty alarming predictions without error or confidence mm -hmm. intervals. Just wondering. About that, is that something that's going to be strengthened as far as data? Yeah, one well, um, one limitation of this uh, tool is that it doesn't have a range and confidence interval. Uh, the method I used to generate those um, predictions doesn't have that, but um, I'm looking at uh, improvements if uh, if I can. Uh, have a range for that. Um, definitely gonna update the data on the back end. Hope this um, answers your question. It does thank you? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Going back to our. Um, our Low emission scenario, uh, go back to the extreme heat data. So this is the change we are looking at. Uh, if we take uh, actions and reduce emission, so less than two degrees of increase at the end of century. Oh, um, and this is how you, uh, change between scenarios. You click on the layers button and uh, you can switch between between scenarios. You can go back to high emission for now. Bu Yu, there was just a quick question from Lindsay on uh, how, how did you change the scenario? Can you just oh, yeah. do that quickly? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, to change between scenario, the click on the first button on the right and choose base map. It says um, high emission or low emission base map. Yeah, that's how you change it. Okay, um, are we getting more questions?
Nope. Okay. Uh, Okay. Actually, we have Corey. Corey raised his hand. Yeah, Corey. Hello, everyone. Um, so, it, is there? A, are we also going over? Uh, I guess remedies for this as well, the, the, or what's ha what's happening? Like, uh, I put in the post that tree planting, and I mean, like excessive tree planting, might be a good way to mm -hmm. to help uh, bring uh, temperatures down in certain areas. Because I notice along rivers, there, like the river in the picture, for example, there's there's a lot of room for for trees along the shorelines. Yeah. Just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for saying that. Yeah, we uh, definitely want to explore all options to mitigate um, climate change. Yeah. Uh, this workshop uh, mostly focused on accessing and interpreting data, but uh, yeah, with uh, Knowing what actions we want to take is definitely helpful for uh, making changes and taking the next step. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Um, so, oh, so this is uh, for accessing data and yeah, it, mo and, and, access. and adding data is 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 that the potential as well? Mm -hmm. Uh, now, now we have looked at how to um, access data. Let's go back to data interpretation. Yeah, um, first we need to know what assumption are we based on uh, when we get the data. For our web page, we have the low emission and high emission scenarios. After knowing which scenario we're talking about, we can now look at uh, some uh, summarized data. First up, the average annual precipitation. Precipitation is uh, refers to all forms of water falling from cloud to ground. It includes rainfall, includes snow, also hail and sleet and like, uh, like that. Those are average yearly total for that period. So for 2021 to 2040, the um, average precipitation we get for a year. Uh, could be this much. Then next step is precipitation as snow. Um, those uh, those numbers are are the uh, measure of water when the snow melts because snow can be uh, packed or or fluffy. So the density is different and the water equivalent is um, more of a reliable reading for that and the unit is millimeter so for example in this case from 2021 to 2040 the snow is going to be 85 millimeter that's uh, 8.5 centimeter and usually snow the actual snow is um, eight to ten times of the number so we're getting maybe 80 centimeter of snow for this period and annual average temperature so the average temperature is calculated by uh, adding 
the high temperature of that that day and low temperature of that day, then divided by two, we get the uh, average temperature. Then we take average temperature of that year. We have the I mean annual temperature. So yeah, that's uh, the unit is in Celsius degrees. And then extreme temperatures. So those are the extreme low or ex extremely low temperature for that period and high. Uh, yeah, those uh, extremes are are um, maybe uh, less reliable for lack of better work. Uh, yeah, I got questions from um, community members saying, hey, the, the temperature from 2021 is already higher than, than the one for 2100. Uh, why is that? Yeah. Um, one thing we need to consider is that um, is the natural variability. We may get um, warmer years or, or cooler years. And <clears throat> those uh, extreme numbers can provide, a, a, just give us an idea of how things change over the period. So um, under the high, High emission scenario, it increased for about four to five degrees. Yeah, that's also true for the average temperature. Yeah, um, above mentioned variables are accessible from our web page. And next up, we have some seasonal variables. Uh, you can get this if our uh, download function works. So we broke up a year into four seasons, um, and those are the uh, month for each of them. And by looking at seasonal data, we get more information. We now know that um, although the precipitation is increased for most of the province. The summer rainfall might be decreased. And we can now know how the temperature changes for the four seasons. And to um, pair the seasonal data with annual data, we can get more information. For example, from the, the annual, yeah, the annual precipitation as snow, we know that, yeah, there will be less snow. And now we know the springs are a lot warmer. So the snow melt will come sooner. And we are getting drier summers. So the chance for drought, drought in the summer uh, is higher in the future. Who you, could I just yeah. jump in quickly? There's a couple sure. questions in the chat. There was a couple about a uh, few people had troubles finding their nations. Is, mm -hmm. is there data inputted for all BC First Nations? And then um, there was another question in the chat just around um tisho some did i say that right i might not have um the map layers it's just there's no station nearby to take readings um uh, what should they use if you look in the chat there's a couple questions as well and the best resource and website to get data for ghd and um i guess people are just wondering if there is no information on their community you know um, is there information mm -hmm. on all 204 First Nations in BC or? Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, um, the the data should be for all two hundred and four nations. If there are no data, uh, yeah, there might be some problem on the back end of our uh, our website. I'll just have a look at that later. But uh, yeah, uh, I tested in this morning and. Uh, it should be uh, should be data for all nations, and uh, if there are if there are missing reserves, uh, yeah, I think I I've used the the best um, map I I can find there. So um, if there's a missing reserve, you can't find a reserve. You can uh maybe go to the closest reserve that have data um, as long as it's not on the other side of the mountain um, it should still provide some some useful information for that uh, reserve And um, if there's no information around your community, uh, that is not because there's no station. Um, the data I use is a downscaled um, ensemble of uh, global circulation models. So, um, yeah, if there's no information, you can uh, let me know, and uh, I will fix that after the workshop. Some communities are too close to each other to show individual data. Uh, so. Um, if there are communities that are too close, you can always uh, zoom in and click on the reserve you are looking for. What is the best resource or website to get data for various greenhouse gas emissions? Uh, I can't think of that uh, top of my head, but uh, yeah, I do have a, a data source saved. I can send you that later. Ooh, you, Patricia yeah. has a, her hand up. Yeah. Go ahead, Patti. Go ahead. And yeah, thanks, Guyu. Um, yeah, I'm also having trouble finding some First Nations communities. Um, I'm wondering if it, that is because we are using the public access to the um, Lightship, because I don't have the same functions that you have. So I cannot find actually any of the communities. So I'm not sure if that would be the, the problem. Oh. Um, what do you think? Uh, uh, I'm using, yeah, I'm using guest mode. Uh, I think everyone should have public, uh, should have the same access because uh, I've tried to make, the purpose of this page is to make data uh, available for everyone. Um, if you are having trouble finding you finding your data, uh, please uh, send me a message or email. I will you, take a look Susan, later. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, Susan just had a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, just that Samyamu is totally surrounded by White Rock and Surrey. And so can you just check 
and see if you can find the Miamu First Nation okay. just to test it. And this is the page I'm yeah, looking at. And yeah, those it's are there. it's there. Mm -hmm. You can see it right underneath the words white rock. You can see where it is, but I don't know where the data is. Okay. Uh, I've only um, include data for uh, reserves and and that's uh, the only reserve they have. Okay. That's it. Um, Come down, go to the left, downstream from New Westminster. Keep going. And right down to the waterfront. Yeah, you know, go, go lower. No, down, down, down from there. Down, keep going, keep going. Down to the to the ocean, keep going. No, now, keep going. Keep going. No, no, go to the left. Now you see your... <laughs> Okay. Now keep going. You're, you're at the ferry terminal now. Just keep going south. Go lower down on the page. Keep going. Keep going because we're way south. We're way south of that. And then, yeah, you were right there. Yeah, there is see White Rock. Go back to where you were. Yeah, White Rock. See where it says what there. Okay, there's the reserve. That's it. So what data have you got for that? So <laughs> see there's 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 still three hundred and twenty hectares there. There's not much. That's the only reserve mm -hmm. land we have, right? Yeah. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Climate change for us has been a sea level rise more than anything. We're dealing yeah. with yeah. But you can see why. Our foreshore is entirely on the ocean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um sea level rise is also a variable we're looking at. We can um, also include that into the map and um, hope that will work for your community. I'm glad to see that we're there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure the data is very much an average. I'll talk to you guys later about that, but yeah. I'm glad to see it's there. Thank you. No problem. Definitely, I would. I'd recommend anyone that's having trouble just to to connect. We'll make sure Guyu's email is in the chat, and Patricia and myself. So, um, yeah, so we can connect after if you're not able to find your community. Also, we had a question from I'm not sure if it's Aaron or Brianna, um, but it says uh, the question is: Does the climate data for each reserve identify where the we weather station location is from which the data is coming? Uh, no, this um, data source of this map isn't uh, based on, yeah, it is based on stations, but uh, for future projections, um, uh, there are um, global models developed, so we are extracting data from the multiple models and uh, downscales, downscale them to the regional level based on location and and elevation. So there uh, is not gonna be a, a station of data source for this um, kind of data. Yeah, um, and the search function of this map isn't best in the world, but uh, uh, it might be easier to just search for a, for a city and then uh, pan and uh, move to the reserve. Uyu, we just had another comment question from Susan in the chat. 
So it says if your community now uses a name not recognized by the federal government, um, like uh, Palamin is an example, Saniamu or in Nanaimo, the date may not show your community's real name. That's actually yes. a really, really good point, Susan. Yes, and, uh, that's might be why the search function isn't working. And yeah, the reserve map I use is um, from the provincial government of BC, and uh, it is updated in 2020, I believe. So if uh, your reserve isn't included in this map, uh, just shoot me a message and uh, I will try to add that data for you. Do you, Brendan has his hand up? Yeah, go ahead, Brendan. Go ahead, Brendan. I'll just jump into that point too. With that geo search that's in Google's screen, there are some issues with searching for uh, First Nations community names, but we can start to address that in the background and maybe program a different search function uh, in the future that'll be uh, more inclusive of the traditional spellings and things like that so uh, thanks for the feedback yep. hey uh, let's have a five minute break and uh, come back at 11 and I will see if I can fix the download function on the fly. Uh, okay. Thanks, thanks everybody for all your questions. Yeah, we'll just come back at 11, fill up your coffee and we'll see you back online at 11. Thank you. The where the data is collected, the sources. Would you mind sending the links to the resources, the sources of the data? Yeah, source of the source of the data is included in the slide, and uh, we will be sharing the slide afterwards. So. Um, climate BC is the main source of the data I use for the map. There's a list for that on the provincial government page. Yeah, um, we can make a map of yeah the current weather stations. Also. Um, we're supporting nations to apply for funding and that funding can be used to um, install ring gauges and, uh, and stuff. All right, I guess we should just, it's great. There's so much chat and conversation. I think so if some people stepped away, please come back and join us for the last, uh, last mm. part. The, the workshop. I guess I guess we'll get started again, Guyu. Yeah. Um, let's go back. Uh, unfortunately, the <laughs> download function stopped working just for the workshop. Um, yeah, hope I can fix that really soon. Um, a report like this is what you can get from the download function and uh, hope this data can be uh, useful for your community. Uh, I'm just curious, what are the different communities using this data to uh, 
uh, in what ways are communities using this data to help support grants or loan? Or what, are, what are the different ways are communities using this information for? Yeah, uh, what I can imagine is to uh, use this data for uh, for water resource planning, management, and agriculture planning with the temperature and the rainfall data. Um, also, the extreme temperatures for public health. Um, yeah, also um, knowing how much more precipi precipitation uh, there's going to be in the future. Uh, we might want to build um, structures that can survive uh, more severe flood or uh, knowing um, knowing how much the temperature is going to increase. Uh, we can um, predict, the, maybe not predict, but uh, have an idea of how the fire danger rating is going to change in the future and uh, maybe apply for funding doing uh, fuel mitigation and fire smarting. Yeah, things, things like that. Uh, currently, what we are already doing is to um, support nations apply for funding to install ring gauges. Hope this answers the question. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And all comments in the chat. Yeah, Suzanne said she's using that for long-term engineering planning. So, Xingyuan, the Future Forest Ecosystem Center is designed to provide tools to help everyone. Yeah, that's great to know. Okay, mm. let's get back to the presentation. Yeah, uh, there are uh, natural climate variability. So the weather isn't the same for every year. Yeah, it's gonna be warmer or colder years, and uh, the extreme temperatures are varied in that case and the model limitations also causes uncertainties of my of the data using the map and some limitation of our page is that it does not um, provide off reserve data so users if off reserve might um, need to find data from some other sources or just email me. Yeah, I can provide uh, data for a specific location. And we also know that uh, there are some uh, reserves don't have data available. I'm gonna fix that. Yeah, and currently the map doesn't show a uh, a range of variable, so um, I'm gonna try to fix that. Uh, if I can find a better <clears throat> way of modeling, yeah, and I believe everyone had the chance to um, to try the map. So um, what I want participants be able to do is to uh, load the map 
navigate the map and uh, find the location you you are interested in. And I hope everybody is able to view the annual climate data. So hope everybody have access to this. And uh, and everyone can um, try to switch between scenarios, to change between high emission, low emission scenarios. And uh, the download function doesn't work today, <clears throat> but I uh, hope if you have time, you can come back maybe in the afternoon or tomorrow and try to download reports for a reserve. And hope participants are able to uh, identify uh, what are the main changes for that reserve. And let's have a look at the chat. Yeah, um, seeing from um, Yeah, Xing has uh, provided her um, contact information in the chat. And you can look at some more uh, data sources. Will you? Yep. Donna, Donna has her hand up. Hi, Donna. Thanks. Yep. Um, just a question on the de data that's uh, included in the map here. Mm -hmm. Since we've experienced the forest fires and the uh, slides as well, is this part of the construction of these maps as well for environment? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, the forest that fires is... that we experienced in BC has had a dramatic impact on yep. landscaping, mudslides, water diversions, uh, erosion, um, yep. construction and such like that. So I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if that's in here as part of it as well too, because it does impact the the way the water runs, the, the runoffs, the um, land uh, um, oh. items that happen, right? Yeah. Those things. So I'm just wondering if um, you have that included here, because when we're looking at this too, we're looking at the impacts of everything that's going on around us, because it's not just in the reserve, it's, it's also around us as well too. And this is what INAC does not um, acknowledge the fact that things do happen beyond our control and beyond our boundaries that we need to be able to mm -hmm. look look at what's impacting us from outside as well too. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Um, the fire, floods uh, are all related, but yeah, for um, this page, it only covers the projections for future. Uh, here on the wildfire overview map, um, there might be some more information about wildfire. Yeah. Do you, if you don't mind, in this particular case, again, help uh, mm -hmm. provide some context? Yeah, and sure. feel free to reach out to me afterwards, uh, Donna. I'll be happy to talk to you. There, this climate change information integrates with a lot of other information around wildfire, wildfire severity, terrain stability, impacts to waterways. There's a whole host of other information that it all kind of ties together that sits in a, a secure community interactive workspace like this, but on the private side of what you're seeing here, this is all the public facing data, but there's a whole bunch of uh, really valuable data that's been that we've collected over the last couple of years around in and around Nicomen. So more than happy for you to reach out to me afterwards. We could set up a time and we'd be more than happy to go through it with you. 
Thank you, because we were in the midst of getting our watershed um, uh, outlined and da data collection in there as well too, until um, uh, Nicola Tribal Association changed over to Shwakam Tribal Council, I think it is. And um, in that midst, you know, we lost we lost a lot of information data. Now, as a small band, it's up to us to be able to get that information on. So having the background of the fires and the, and the slides and stuff like that, you know, would help us greatly in regards to at least just uh, putting up the map and saying, okay, this area is area of concern because, um, the way the water came down on the Nicolin Creek, it, it dramatically changed a lot of aspect of um, the land erosion above us too. So the impact and and uh, things like that to IR number two for us um, is changing a lot of thought ideas in regards to developing that we had before. Now we got to clean up and face the fact again that, um, again, INAC says you can't build a dike unless you got something to protect. And we can't build something unless we got a dike. So it's cart for the horse thing again. And, you know, with this other information that we greatly need, we need to have this somewhere so we can at least point it out and say, that's the problem right there. Thank you. Yeah, reach out to me um, as soon as you can there, Don. I'd be more than happy to chat with you. We have probably exactly what you're looking for in this case. I think there was a lot of valuable things collected post wildfire, like LIDAR and stuff around your area. Yes. And a lot of that data sits in, in this tool now in sort of the, the secure Nickelman workspace. So yeah, give me a shout once you can. Sorry, you let you get back to it. Yeah, um, now we are just having our time for questions, discussion, and feedbacks. Um, something I want to know is that, um, is there any information you need but is not provided by the map? Now we um, know including sea level rise in the map is going to be helpful. Uh, if you can think of some other needed data, please let me know in the chat or just unmute and speak up. Uh, do you? Yeah. I was just wondering, can you quickly uh, show us how we access the wildfire overview and how to how to navigate that? Or Because mm -hmm. I'm looking at it on, on my phone and I just, it's, there's no way to interact with it on my phone. I, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. If I'm wrong or what. Yeah. Um, it, might be difficult to review that on the phone. On the phone, so this is what you're gonna see if you. Yeah, I, I click my file. My file overview is not showing the the, the dots all over. It, oh, I guess. okay. Okay, maybe it's because I'm on my phone. I'm not sure. Yeah, might be. Yeah, those um, those dots are pulled from uh, PC government, so they are live data. Uh, uh, real time updated, so it shows um, current fire locations, and we can also see fire status for that. The this one is being held. And click on a different one. That one is out. Yeah. So these are just like snapshot information. It's not uh, projections or anything like that. Yeah, this are uh, yeah snapshot real time information. Yeah, because it's a publicly available one, we wanted to do a snapshot in time. But again, on the private side of this for communities, there is real time data that's being fed into a similar map. So you actually have NASA uh, hotspot imagery being showed in conjunction to these other data layers, as well as many other things being pulled in sort of simultaneously. But uh, just because of this being again public, you have to kind of limit it somewhere. And some other source you can get family data from. There's PKIC, 
climatedata.ca and climatebc. Um, climatebc provides uh, also provides um, ecological projections and it was checking out. And this is the main data source I, I get from. We can also include those links in the follow-up email as well. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and also the the slides is gonna be shared later. Was there any other questions? Let me just do one last check to make sure. Um, all right, no further questions. I just wanted to thank you, Guyu, uh, and all the participants actually for all of the the discussion and comments. And yeah, it was very interactive, exactly what we wanted. So I know that um, there will be probably unleft questions and we'll make sure that you have uh, Guyu or Brendan's email and then the decision support email. We'll put them at the end of uh, end of the workshop. Uh, I would just like to, to pass it over to my colleague Patricia Rojas uh, to finish us off in a good way and to follow up on just the next, the next workshop and just a few other details before um, we let you go for the day. So I'll pass it over to Patricia. Thanks, Christy. Sorry, trying to move my screen here. I have my, I wasn't, you know, practicing and exploring the map and all the potential of the light ship. It's really very, very interesting. I think it's, it's uh, you know, it's hard to work with data because it's, it's confusing and the data are coming from different places and also the data is connected to a specific time, right? So uh, we want uh, the, the projections and we want also historical data, how this data can inform our decisions, how we can manage, how we can interpret those, all the data. Um, it's very hard. I think some... Some of the um, issues that we uh, kind of discuss a little bit and people were sharing also on the chat is how important it is not just to have this data available, but also how important it is for the nations to have uh, accurate, uh, reliable data. So that means like mm, more weather stations. Uh, I think, you know, some of the um, communities, they have their own uh, weather station and usually those uh, stations are not part of the network. Um, maybe that's something we should explore a little bit more and also which uh, programs are out there that can support um, the nations to create their own data. I always remember uh, former Chief Patrick Michel when he described uh, um, her um, in his community uh, how important is the weather station for them and to also monitor, you know, when there is a fire close by, when there's a heat dome. So how much is the temperature in, in that specific local area? Uh, so um, I think that's something we need to explore more. Uh, access to this light ship is, I think is very important, but as I said, it's, it's a little bit um, hard to understand, but thank you uh, to you and Brendan uh, and Finesse for mm, doing this, you know, this work and trying to put this data available for uh, the whole province. Uh, it's it's mm, a giant work. And we discussed before and how to improve that data, how we can put more in, you know, in data that's coming from those impacts uh, that were shared today that, you know, some nations have with past uh, climate-related um, events. Um, so how we can put also that information on the website and it's available for everyone. Uh, I think that's also something we want to work on. 
So yeah, thank you for uh, coming. Thanks for sharing all your the work you are doing uh, for those who posted on the chat and also for uh, taking the time to uh, listen to Gu Yu and, and his presentation. So next one, we have our uh, workshop part two. That's um, this um, workshop will be on June 20. The registration link is on the BCFN events website. Uh, maybe Christy can also post the, um, the link if you haven't registered already. Please share that link with your colleagues or people you think would be interested. So the second um, workshop, uh, we want to explore more in depth the use of the Lightship platform, uh, exploring the benefits and limitations. And Finesse will demonstrate the use of time data templates, including adaptation tools, environmental impacts, tracking, and reporting tools. So if you are interested in using the Lightship tools in your own community, please contact Finesse and request a free Lightship account. Um, and all other relevant links and guides will be also shared with registrants um, prior to that workshop. Finesse also offers in-person training for First Nations, so reach out to Guyu uh, if you want to learn more uh, about allyship and how it works. And also to, you know, support Finesse work on how they can improve this uh, tool that is, as I said, is very, very important for all the communities. So thank you very much for coming today and I hope to see you soon in the next um, workshop. And I think, Christy, sorry, uh, I wasn't closing, but I think we have that contact information, right? Yes, uh, we have in that um, in that slide, you you have um, Guyu um, email address um, and also our email address are there if you need to reach out to us. And it, also, if you want BCFN to host uh, another um, session, or maybe we were talking about forestry today, how to, uh, you know, climate data can inform um, the, when we plant trees or other species, um, maybe that's also uh, something that we can discuss. And we are very, very happy uh, to support you in whatever you need. So thank you. And pass over to Christy. Oh, there is a question there. Daniel. Daniel. Yeah, go yeah. ahead, Daniel. I was just wondering if I heard that correctly. In the future, you'll be offering LIDAR training. Is that what you said? Or did I hear that wrong? But it would be useful. Lightship, I think. Lightship? Yes, oh, okay, sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that correctly. So it's not sorry. LIDAR. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, it's okay. more more training on the Lightship. So the Lightship. Oh, okay, sorry. Yes, the Lightship platform. That's the one Finnis uses. And he, yeah, the one we walked through today. So we they are offering, Finesse is offering one-to-one -one training as well for your community. So uh, if you want to know more about that, please connect with Finesse. And or the light ship, light ship. Yeah, the light okay, ship. Okay, okay, right, right on, thank you. <laughs> so, Kathy, one thing quick, Patricia, is Dan, if you're interested in LIDAR in and around the Causeway, there are funding programs to get projects like that off the ground. So just shoot, shoot me an email. I can, can, can connect you to the right people on our team, and then you can start those discussions about how to get whichever sort of project you're looking for, terrain assessments, things like that. And how about capacity? Like, we don't have someone has that through um there are there are some opportunities to train people on like uavs and, and that type of thing um probably more of a conversation we should take offline but, okay thank you i know there was one more question from susan we might as well um answer it uh it was just uh about it would be helpful to know who has started collecting long long-term data for the local area maybe not the just the reserve lands but other areas yeah um yeah for uh long-term data collection uh there's stations and uh, there might be uh, people are doing that on their own and uh, we just don't know of uh, but the next workshop we are introducing forms 
that uh, can be used to um, to just document um, past data that is not captured by other uh, sources. Yeah, that's that's a very mm. important part. Yeah. Because, um, if if a community has data like that that kind of overlaps and yeah. you, they've got it, it helps speed things up in terms of your planning mm. pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And we hope yeah to make a tool that captures um traditional knowledge and uh, yeah, just knowledge from the the people that live on the land. That's exactly it. We should talk about that offline, Colin. <laughs> yeah, and actually, Susan, I'm not sure if any of the other participants, if you missed the first webinar, put it in the chat. It's on the BC AFN events page. There was a really good example on how um, Chilcote Nation is using climate data with traditional knowledge. So there's a presentation in there that you can download and have a look as well. So really important point, Susan, as well. And uh I don't know if there's any final burning questions or comments before we close the line, but I just wanted to thank you all uh, for participating. And I wanted to thank Guyu for your presentation and for Brendan from Finesse for joining us and partnering and working together and my colleague Patricia and Joanna on the line. So thank you to everybody and I wish you all a good day.